Good morning. You guys hear me okay? Okay. So we live in exciting times. Uh, I was just flashing back to 12 months ago at this event. It was one of those interesting kind of world-changing uh, times, if you remember, a lot going on politically. Um, but I'll tell you, digital transformation the last 12 months has taken off as well. Um, there are several different dynamics that are underway in the industry right now, uh, whether it's the, you know, the Internet of Things, and as a carrier, we, we think about this in the context of, you know, historically we used to connect buildings and, a, you know, a large network, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand buildings. Now we see customers with, you know, a hundred thousand endpoints. You know, it's, it's a reality today. Uh, global IP traffic continues to grow. For, for AT&T, that growth is approximately 250,000 percent since 2007. Think, think about any business that grows 250,000% in that amount of time. Software centricity is another dynamic that continues to evolve. I've talked about this in the context of what uh, AT&T is doing really over the last couple of years in this, in this forum. Public and private cloud adoption, something like 75% of application workloads currently are residing in, a, in the cloud. So that connection to these cloud environments is essential. And then artificial intelligence, going from, uh, from static to agile to eventually predictive. And I think AI will be a driver in that regard. And then pervasive security. This is one area where we're seeing increase in spend, increase in investment, approximately 40% increase year over year because the threats are out there. It's really not about any one of these dynamics, by the way, these technology enablers. It's really the confluence of all of them that are driving digital transformation and, candidly, disruption as well. And if you think about it in the context of business, one that I was thinking about last night, company that all of us are familiar with, Airbnb. So Airbnb didn't exist 10 years ago. They're now a company with a $31 billion market cap did about $3 billion in revenue last year. If you think about the Fortune 500, the average Fortune 500 company took about 20 years to generate their first billion dollars. Google did it in eight years. Airbnb did it in three. That's disruption. And it's happening. So in this type of environment where things are moving very quickly, I think one of the essential elements for anybody is to have a solid vision. And last year, I walked through AT&T's vision for an intelligent network, and I covered all three of these elements of, of the, intelligent, um, the intelligent network, starting with the software-defined core, virtualized services, and, and SD-WAN. I'll, I'll start with the very top, the software-defined core. This is an interesting area. We, you know, we introduced, probably two years ago, our first software-defined services at and switched Ethernet on demand, and then we introduced at and dedicated internet on demand. We've continued to add additional services. We've got a software-defined voice capability called Collaborate. So over the last three years, we've continued to scale this. Uh, approximately 10,000 software-defined networks have been deployed for us. And it's been really interesting to, to watch the evolution. I actually closed last year, if you're at the event, you may remember this, around a comment around common um, industry areas that we need to drive standardization. There were three areas, one of which was federation of SDN networks. And it, it was so interesting to walk away from that. And within a few weeks, I remember being, um, uh, being uh, asked about whether or not the MEF would be a good facilitator of, of SDN federation of layer two networks. And lo and behold, the team came together, and it was AT&T, Orange, Colt, and others, and we're actually demonstrating it today. So we've gone from an idea to a concept to it actually working. And it's going to be demonstrated, I think, down in the, the, the hall uh, as the event uh, proceeds. So software-defined um, network is at, at, at the top of the pyramid, but at the bottom, you've got the virtualized services and SUN. As we think about the intelligent edge, really it's the confluence of these two areas that, that, that we think about. So first of all, you've got to have a vision. That vision's got to be flexible. It's got to be adaptable. Um, but you've got to have a plan, most importantly. And so for AT&T, the plan really is around these four 
uh, primary elements. One is ONAP. This is the network operating system, probably one of the most complex undertakings for AT&T in the last decade or two, about eight and a half million lines of code. And it is the, the brains, the orchestrator of all of our services. Then you've got the AT&T integrated cloud infrastructure. This is kind of our next generation of cloud infrastructure that enables us to virtualize services across the globe. And you've got Flexware. I introduced Flexware last year. And if you think about those, those AT&T integrated cloud nodes, Flexware is basically a compute infrastructure, but out on the customer premise. And then you've got your VNFs that actually ride on those devices. So that is the, the overall plan. In the last 12 months, we've been working hard with a lot of conviction around delivering on that plan. So I'll just give you an update on some of these, these areas. So first of all, ONAP. We've released ONAP to the open source community. If you had asked me a year ago if I thought that would be something we would do, I would say I didn't think that's very logical. It's not something AT&T typically does. But it is uh, something we did. And really, it's all about driving industry innovation at scale. And since we've released it, it's been adopted by um, carriers across the globe. If you look at those carriers, they account for about 60% of the worldwide mobility traffic globally. So the adoption has been strong and it continues to be uh, innovated on top of. Our AIC infrastructure continues to grow. We've actually doubled the capacity of that infrastructure in the last 12 months. We're well on our way of virtualizing 75% of our network by 2020. By the end of this year, I expect we'll be at about 55% of our network being virtualized. Flexware has continued to evolve. I'll talk more about it. Um, as of right now, there are about 130 different VNF combinations that can be enabled within this Flexware platform. And our portfolio of, of VNF options can, continues to grow as well. So that's the plan. Now I want to talk a little bit about the intelligent edge. And I think before we look forward, it's helpful to maybe take a step back and look at how we've evolved over the last several years. And a lot of you understand this, this concept, but it really was not all that long ago that the environments out on the edge of the network were really entirely physical. Proprietary devices, expensive, um, difficult to configure. The complexity of, of that environment was astounding. And I think one of the more important elements of this environment that isn't probably as obvious is that innovation cycles were measured in three to five years, or however long it took you to replace those physical devices out on the premise. And I'll tell you, some customers, it's much longer than three to five years. They sweat those assets for eight, nine, 10 years. So the innovation was not happening at the pace that we would expect. So take the last couple of years, and this has been really driven by the adoption of SDN and NFE technologies. We've gone from physical to virtual. So we've taken those, those hardware instances, separated the hardware from the software, and now we're able to run multiple functions on an inexpensive white box device out on the premise. It drives efficiency both of the physical assets, but also operational and management efficiency, as you're able to have one solution as opposed to multiple solution. And it's orchestrated. I, I think this is an important point because the, the, the shift from physical to virtual is not a clean break. This doesn't just happen overnight. The reality is these are hybrid environments, and so you have to have a solution that can be orchestrated across physical and virtual and, or, and, and built in such a way that it, it works in an, an entire network environment. So that's where we are today. If I were to just kind of put this over the continuum of time, and our play in this space has really been Flexware. And as I mentioned, this is our, our, our edge device, and it's something I introduced at this conference uh, last year. So we've been working hard at this. I'll tell you where we stand right now. This is now truly a network agnostic global solution. So available now in over 200 countries, uh, both on Ethernet as well as TDM access technologies, both AT&T and third party. So it's a ubiquitous solution across the globe. The ability to deploy and scale VNFs has is, is, is been a very large part of the value proposition. Deploying a device and then allowing a customer to grow into it by adding 
uh, different uh, functions is, is, is a huge part of the value proposition. Flexible management options was another part of this. Well, we've said that you know, we'd like to manage the actual virtual instances, but we'll give customers the flexibility if they want to do that themselves, they can. We even have partners that can manage those virtual functions. But I'll tell you that probably the single biggest value driver that we've seen um, and, and why customers are adopting this is because it is a future-ready platform. I talked about those innovation cycles. Customers no longer need to worry about an innovation cycle because they can add a, a VNF or change a VNF dynamically as it becomes available. So last year, I, I, I mentioned, um, I had a slide and it was a, a bar chart and it, it basically was the, the, the progress that we've made. This is the, the slide that I think about probably the second I walk off the stage. It's, you know, how have we done actually executing on, on the vision? This is my scorecard, my, my uh, intimate, you know, a, appraisal session with uh, five or 600 of my closest friends and a few of my competitors. You can all see kind of how we've done. This is the scaling customer growth of Flexware over the last 12 months, actually since, since I stood up on this stage about a year ago. So it's, as I mentioned, it's currently deployed in approximately, well, it's available in 20, uh, 200 countries. It's deployed in 30. So we've had 30 different uh, deployment in 30 different countries. 100% um, of these deployments start with routing as the first virtual instance. 50% are adding security, which is intuitive. And then 30% are adding optimization. I mentioned the flexibility of the, uh, the management structure, the ability to have both customer managed as well as AT&T managed configurations. What we've actually found is that 90% of customers are choosing to have AT&T manage the entire platform, VNFs as well as the, the, the actual physical device, which is a good thing. We like that. The last thing that we found is that we, we've been able to really um, increase the pace at which we can add VNFs into the platform. This is hugely important. In 2018, I expect we'll be adding between three and four VNFs every single quarter. So that takes us to the next stage in the evolution, going from virtual to intelligent. And when I think about intelligent, it really is um, three primary elements. So, so first of all, it's extensible. And when I think about extensible, it gets back to adding those, the, the different BNFs within the platform. One great example of an extensible platform is um, uh, actually a VNF that we added just uh, within the last three months. Uh, called a, a, it's called AWS Greengrass. It's an IoT gateway functionality. And basically, it allows us to do processing of data out on the premise, closed loop processing for latency sen sensitive applications and then securely sends data to the AWS cloud for deeper processing. It's an interesting application, it's an interesting VNF, but what I love about this example is we hadn't even thought of it five months ago. It wasn't even conceptualized. And now it's one that is um, being brought into the portfolio and be commercially available within the next couple of months. Policy-based is another uh, intelligent element of the, of the platform. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then cloud-ready. I mentioned earlier that 75% of applications are residing in clouds, public or private. So the ability to blur the lines between the premise and those cloud environments and have secure connectivity between the two of them is hugely important. So let's talk a little bit about the next phase for us and how we make this intelligent edge real. And I think probably the single biggest offering that will become um, available in the marketplace that really reinforces this concept is AT&T's SD-WAN network-based solution. Now, I will tell you that we've been in the SD-WAN business for a long time. We've actually got about 100,000 deployments under our belt um, in, in more of a, a, a static network-based configuration, but this is the first time we've done a dynamic network-based architecture. And I'm really excited about this for a, a few reasons. I think it will be differentiated in the marketplace. So first of all, from a policy-based perspective, it does give us the ability to do dynamic application-aware routing, which is not uncommon with uh, any SD-WAN capability. It is architected um, using our AT&T integrated cloud infrastructure. 
And one of the elements of this that I think is differentiated is it's got built-in resiliency. So if that gateway that's sitting in the AT&T cloud infrastructure goes down for whatever reason, it automatically fails over to another gateway elsewhere across the globe. So it's got that automated failover capability. As I mentioned uh, before, extensibility is hugely important. In the context of this solution, I can think about that across a couple of domains. So first of all, it's built with the Flexware platform. So it's a, it's a great marriage of an intelligent network and an intelligent edge. So the ability to run SD-WAN as a virtual function, but other virtual functions as well, is part of the, that overall value proposition. I think it's also unique. The other element of extensibility in this um, architecture is that it really preserves the value of the MPLS network. It's not an either or type dynamic. So you've got the ability to make site by site decisions. You can deploy it at one location if you want, or you can deploy it across your network. And you can pre preserve MPLS features like multicast within this holistic network configuration. And lastly, it's cloud ready. That AIC infrastructure, as I mentioned, continues to grow. It will enable this service to be available in 200 countries within uh, the first quarter of 2018. And it also enables highly secure access to cloud environments through our NetBond capability. So we're very excited about this. Again, be launched in the first quarter of, of next year. So that's the Intelligent Edge. I'm excited to um, lay out that next evolution. It's really about bridging the LAN environments, the WAN environments, the physical, the virtual, and bringing it all together in a converged and simplified um, uh, construct that is smart, extensible, application-aware, and dynamic. Thank you very much.